Hello, everyone. Welcome to our second Meet the Mentors uh, fun, exciting group chat, live stream, call it whatever you want. Uh, I'm excited to see who is going to join us today to learn a little bit more about the Icology Mentorship Program and also meet a few of our mentors. So we did one of these earlier this week on Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern. We are now on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, and we are doing one more on Friday 3 p.m. Eastern. They are all being recorded, so you can go back and learn a little bit more about our mentors and the Icology Mentorship Program. The deadline to apply is October 31st. So if you are on the fence, you're trying to learn more, you're in the right place. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm going to bring in, we've got three of our mentors with me here today. Would love to know who is joining us from where, uh, all of, all of the fun things, what's happening on your Wednesday. Uh, let's, let's bring in my friends. Here we go. Hello everyone. We've got Lindsay, Chuck, and Deborah here. Oh, look at this right out of the gate. Our friend Demi is joining us. Hello, Demi. She is in Dallas, I think. Yeah. Texas, all the great things in Texas. So let us know where you're joining us from. If you have questions, if you have comments, if you just want to tell us about all the exciting things uh, that are going on in your life, and if you maybe you've been a part of a mentorship program before. So I'm going to kick things off. We're going to do some intros here. And I'm going to start with my partner in life and work, who is on the first floor of our house right now, while I'm up on the second floor directing traffic. Chuckos, welcome to the mentorship program. Would you please introduce yourself with who you are, where you are, where you work, and please share your best or favorite Halloween costume? Mm, good one. So yes, hello everyone. Chuck goes here, head of community at First Up, uh, live from Indianapolis, or as Kristen put, downstairs from her. And my best... Halloween costume of all time. I believe it was second or third grade. I thought this was pretty genius. I went to school dressed as a mime because you can't talk when you're a mime. And, and you managed to pull that off all day? You were supposed to be in costume all day long in your character. So I had a pretty good day that day. Uh, just full disclosure, there's no way I would ever be able to pull that off. There's, yep. there's yeah, no possible way I'd be able to shut up for an entire day. So that's, yeah. I'm, I'm impressed. Well, you could be selective, I guess. And I guess that's true. Yeah. I yeah. guess that's true. Welcome, welcome. Okay, Ms. Deborah Helwig. Hello, welcome, welcome. If I can manage the unmute button, I'll be great. Hi, everybody. Speaking of, speaking I'm, of mimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I am Deborah Helwig. I'm the internal communications director for an accounting and consulting firm called Pinion. Uh, my best Halloween costume, I, I, I'm not a Halloween dresser, but I will say I, we have in our firm, this is Princess Pinionista. She accompanies me to our all hands uh, quarterly meetings. And so at our last all hands last October, I wore a flamingo on my head. So, you know, take one for the team and, and live your brand. That's what I got to say. Deborah, is that Kristen's alter ego in stuffed animal form? Entirely possible. She's got the happy. fluff in the background to prove it. It's good. Uh, De Deborah and I have had conversations about uh, the flamingo because I also have a stuffed flamingo, not within reach, but I do have one nearby. And it's so there must be some kindred spirits thing happening here. Something, something <laughs> going on. Okay, and as all as always with live stream events, sometimes there's technical things that happen along the way. Lindsay, can you hear what I'm saying? No, she cannot. Excellent. Okay, wonderful. So, um, but you can hear everybody, every, what everybody else is saying. This is magical. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try and just chat to Lindsay. Do you remember Galaxy Quest where there was the woman that repeated the computer? That's what I, I can repeat what you okay. just said, which is, Lindsay, please introduce yourself to the group. <laughs> and tell them your best Halloween costume ever. Excellent. Thank you so much for, for being the in-between, Deborah. Um, I'm Lindsay Turner. I am the founder and Frank advisor at Be Frank Communications. I spent about 16 years in-house corporate communications, um, running, building, rebuilding communications teams. And now I work closely with leaders to build systems, 
and put things in place to help them navigate change and transformation within their companies. So that way they can have the space to lead and um, their teams and their cultures can thrive. So really important to me to make sure that the employee experience is wonderful, even for internal communicators, which is why I work closely with leaders. And my favorite or best Halloween costume would probably be, my mom is super crafty, amazing, made me an M&M costume. So giant red padded, fully sewn M&M costume that my brother wore and my nieces and nephews have all worn since then. And it is ancient at this point, but it has not gone out of style because the red M&M still exists. When you, Lindsay, when you first said M&M, I imagined you doing rap battles in like, <laughs> like that's what I was thinking. Only on game days oh, do right, I do rap too. battles. Yeah. And I, I'm curious if Lindsay can still not hear me. I'm changing my microphone. Nope. Cool. Excellent. We're going to roll with it. Um, okay. Here's, here's what I want to know from folks. I assume everyone else can still hear me. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. The, oh, look at the, Lindsay's getting love. Agreed. Lindsay is phenomenal. So I don't know if Lindsay, Lindsay has like a fan club or something coming out of the, I love it. So one of the, the Icology Mentorship Program has gone through a couple of different iterations throughout the last couple of years, actually. Um, it was almost more of a, comms buddies type of program, I think, for a while. And um, what we have learned from it is now going to take us into this next iteration of it, which is a more formalized program with built-in accountability. It is a nine-month program. There are checkpoints along the way. There is support and help along the way. It is a mentee-driven program. There's all kinds of information. Oh, wait, I have a fun banner. Look at this. Uh, there's all kinds of helpful information on our website about the program. And uh, so I will not go into all of the details here because the goal of today is really to get to know all of our mentors here. I would love to know, um, Deborah, I'll start with you. I would love to okay. know, what is, do you have an ideal mentee? Is there someone that you're like, oh, if I'm going to mentor someone, this is the kind of mentee I would like to have? Okay, so I'm going to repeat the question for Lindsay. Um, so if you were going to describe a mentee or somebody who would make a great mentee for you, um, I would say I would be probably most synced up with someone who is really, really focused on connecting head and heart. I am really double down on the idea that internal communications is certainly process driven. Of course, there are metrics, but that we bring value in an internal comm team one heart at a time and focusing the way that we structure our communications to really see, uh, to, to maintain even in large firms, sort of a sideline to individual and to think about how we are communicating with everyone at every level from top down um, in a very personal way. Um, that certainly has some inclusive aspects to it as well, but, but really it's about that emotional connection between what you're sharing and, um, and the value that it brings. Um, so anybody that is really focused on sort of the humanness of communication um, would probably like working with me. Also, I, I'm, I'm a really precious person about gray writing. So, you know, anybody that, that is a word person that loves to love the way that things taste in your mouth when you're saying them. If that, if, you know, if that's, if that's something that appeals to you, then they would probably like working with me. Love it. Okay. We're I'm, I tried one more audio thing to see if Lindsay can hear me, but apparently this is still not happening. Okay. Can you pass it over to Lindsay for me? Uh, yes, Lindsay. Uh, the question now comes to you. Uh, what would make a great mentee for you? Okay. Thank you again, Deborah. Um, I feel like Kristen is the mime in my world. So I, I just need a mime costume now. I'm just going to see that. So um, maybe Chuck has something that she can borrow or I don't know. But great mentee for me, I think, is somebody who is open and curious and willing to invest and bet on themselves. So um, I have I am where I am because I've had mentors that I sought out personally, but also indirect, like didn't seek out, but they just kind of latched on and said, hey, we're going to help 
help you get to where you want to go. And that has been one of the most amazing ongoing gifts to me. And I want to be able to give back to that. So somebody who knows there's more potential, wants to see it. Um, the other side of that is maybe they're going through a challenging time in work. I've, I've been in corporate. I know what happens. Internal comms is not the easiest. Most of us did not go to school for internal communications because there's not a degree for it. So understanding how to navigate the complexities, anybody who's <coughs> running into just really complex situations and wants to have some clarity and peace of mind. That's also something that I, I love to pour into mentees to help them find a better space wherever they are. I, there was something on, I'll just give a heart symbol to Lindsay. So she knows. Yeah. Um, Chuck, there was something on LinkedIn when you originally posted about the mentorship program. And I think it was our friend Russell who commented Something to the effect of like the mentor, Chuck's not the mentor we want. He's the mentor we need or something like that. It sounds about right. It sounds about right. What do you have a different, cause here, here's what I know about, about you. It's not going to be a soft and fluffy kind of mentorship relationship. Agree or disagree. I'm going to disagree a little bit okay. with that. Okay. Maybe. Cause when I, when I was thinking about this, I think I have been mentored in my career, but I don't know that I've had a structured relationship with a mentor. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to raise my hand and be a part of this, because I think it's something that I missed out on early in my career, is having that structure to it. There's always people you look up to and people you model and people that give you advice, but I think it's that structure that I think is helpful. When I think about somebody that uh, I would probably be ideally matched with, it's somebody who's looking to find their voice, somebody who's looking to build their brand, whether that's internally inside the company where they want to get a brand, maybe externally outside their four walls to uh, maybe get more attention on the content you're creating or your ideas. And also someone who likes to experiment with things and play and try new things. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, that's OK, because we learn something, we apply it to the next one. So someone who's not afraid to take chances. Mm -hmm. on themselves and someone like that who looks to looking to build their voice, build their brand in this space for whatever that end result might end up being. Okay. I see Lindsay nodding, but I don't think she can hear me. Probably not, but um, she's, she just it generally agrees with everything I say. So that is such a lie. And she can't I, tell you that you're lying. So I, that, that's also true. That, yeah. <laughs> that is also true. Um, I'm, I'm curious if industry has plays any role for any of you in terms of who you are matched. Do you think industry matters when it comes to, um, mentor and mentorship? I'm going to not ask about geography because the whole program is virtual. So the geography part of it in my mind is somewhat irrelevant. Um, but I'm curious if industry matters to any of you. Okay. Everyone's muted now. We're all what's going on here? No, does not. in does industry matter, Lindsay? Does does it matter in terms of do you think you would work with a particular industry better or a mentee would seek you because they work in a particular industry? I would say that I'm industry agnostic and I feel that way with mentoring and mentees, but also with internal communications. I've worked across countless industries, company sizes. And what you're working towards in your career, while it may feel like it's really specific to healthcare or it's really specific to manufacturing, what I think is really powerful is figuring out and seeing and getting the perspective of, oh, this isn't just a healthcare problem. This is something that comes up as an internal communicator, as a career growth um, milestone that we just have to work through, right? So a lot of times when I'm talking to or mentoring someone, right. they'll say, oh, this is just what I'm dealing with right now. It's only because of this company and this industry and I'm, I'm pigeonholed here. And so because of my background in all the different industries and, and current clients now, I'm able to give them some perspective of here's what it looks like in other areas and help them understand that it's not just that industry that they're in. The financial industry is a great example. I have people that will ask me, is this, this is just a problem here. So if I get out of this industry, it's going to fix it. And so I'm able to give that perspective. Sure. If I get out of healthcare, things will just, decisions will be made faster. It's not always the case. And so I, I think that industry, while it's relevant, it's not necessarily, um, it shouldn't be a considering factor. 
I, I 100% agree with Lindsay on that point. I mean, my career, if you were going to look at my career as a touchstone, I spent a long time in trade associations, and then I've been working in professional services for a long time. But it doesn't matter what industry you're in. Companies are huge sacks of people. That's what it is. And you are learning how to communicate with individuals and help them move toward goals for themselves for their companies and to connect with the clients and to help their clients achieve their goals. And that is agnostic. You, you're going to do the same sorts of things and deal with the same sorts of problems in some shape or form, no matter where you work. So I don't think it matters at all. Just, you know what? Just for the sake of this discussion, of I'm course, going to say industry does play a role in this. And, okay. he, and he, here's, here's the perspective on it. My background was in manufacturing communications. So you're dealing with obviously a lot of frontline workers. You're dealing with a lot of union environments. Like I'm actually jealous now that I'm not working for one of the automotive manufacturers right now during the strike communications, because that is completely different than other worlds that are out there. So while <laughs> industry isn't the most important thing, I do think what you can do is you can find camaraderie with someone who has some of that shared experience. You know they've gone through it. Um, Deborah is apparently now an HR representative talking about people being sacks of people. So <laughs> there you go. Hey, so, I sit so, on a people team, man. I sit on a people team. Let's not lie. So industry isn't the most important thing, but I think it actually can make a difference when it talks about, when it, when it comes to building mm -hmm. that relationship with someone, when you know you've had that shared experience, I think it can... It can bridge gaps. I think it can help things. I, I love arguing with you, Chuck. It's my very favorite that. thing. You, you and I, you and I always put on the boxing gloves when we're together. Yes, and okay. So yes, I think that's absolutely true. But I think you can also get into analysis paralysis and sort of everybody talking the same language. I think having the exposure to people that are working in a different industry or have different background than you do may open your mind to new ways of doing things. So I don't, I don't think you're wrong, but I don't think, but I think it, it, it could go either way. Hmm. I think so. I'll find the middle ground for you guys because I'm the Libra who likes to find balance. Um, and I think it really depends okay. on what is the mentee looking to get out of the relationship and through mm -hmm. this program, right? Are they coming sure. because they're just, they don't know how to handle union communications and they want to help they need support and guidance and growing as a communicator on a specific industry or topic, or is it because they're working on something personally that they want to grow within their career and, you know, goals that they're setting and working towards. So, and it could be both, but I think that really is the mentee, you know, take the perspective of all of us, but it really is what do they hope to get out of the program and what do they hope their mentor will bring to the table for them? Mm -hmm. I love like that. I'm curious if there are, and I'll, well, we'll we can translate for Lindsay here. Um, you know, some of you have had past experience with mentorship programs, mentees, mentors, whatever, whatever side of things that is, um, are there, is there advice you would give to a potential mentee who is on the fence about applying hmm. and what they would think about? Yeah, I'll jump in with this one. So Lindsay, the question is for a mentee, if they're on the fence and applying, oh, Lindsay, like, I can what? hear, I can hear. That's oh. why I went, ah! It. Oh, amazing. Yeah, okay, I can there you I, go. There we go. Have you heard of the conversation? 10 minutes left. <laughs> then you go for this one. Oh, geez. I really wanted to hear what your perspective was so that way I could get you and Deborah oh, sure. Let's go heads for it. and okay. then I'll come in and so then, bring some clarity uh, for people. I think I think for for a mentee, you you have to make sure that you can commit to it. It it's it is a um it's not a lot of work. It should be stuff you look forward to doing. It should be, you should be looking forward to building that relationship whether it's connecting with your mentor or it's spending time with other mentees and sharing the knowledge there. It's something that you should take pretty seriously. It's, it's important. It can really help you in your career. It can build um, your baseline knowledge with certain areas. It can you know, encourage you to go into some new areas, but you've got to take it pretty seriously. So I think if you're like, mm, I don't really know if I can commit the time, then I'd probably say, no, don't sign up for it. But if you're like, no, I need to commit the time. I need this for me. I need to spend the next year really sharpening that blade or spending time um, developing new skills, then double down on it. Yeah. that would, You stole my line, Chuck. Um, but I would also say um, be prepared to stretch. Be prepared to take on new things, to try um, 
something you've never done before, to accept challenges with grace, to be willing to be told, you know, you could probably do better or more. If you're coming into this for somebody to approve, uh, to seek approval or to seek you're doing great, that's probably not what, what you're going to get from a mentor. You may get that, but then they're going to go, you're doing great. Now go do these other five things because you could do you could do better. It's the job of a mentor to seek the greatness in you that you're unwilling to seek yourself and to push you to achieve that. Well, there's a mic drop. I don't know if yeah, I wanted to, a- I shouldn't have followed yeah. Deborah because she had a <laughs> nutshelled everything I was gonna say is yeah, you have to you have to be willing to show up. If you're on the fence, you're not sure, make a list of what would what are things that would happen if I did choose me and I did set the boundaries and I did show up every day? What would happen if I don't? Where would I stay? Where would I grow? What would happen? And really just think about like a little bit of reflection inwards. What are you wanting to do and be and grow to? Because to Deborah's point, we help you get to where you want to go. And sometimes it's a place you don't even know exists. And I can say that from personal experience and Kristen and I, have a rule that um, we've started saying if, if it scares us, but it feels good. So it's, we're like scared, but excited. You're skyded. The answer is yes, just do it. Do something that scares you at least once a year. um, And you're going to look back and it's going to be something that you're really proud of yourself for. Um, The other thing is to consider what a powerful thing it is to tell others that you have committed to being mentored by somebody. I think that's set speaks volumes. So whether you're trying to grow in your current, your current role, you want to find a new role. You don't know what you want to be when you grow up. That's also okay. Telling people that you're investing in yourself and you're working on growing with someone outside of your normal circle speaks volumes to your level of um, maturity, as well as what you're capable of achieving. I'll add to that too, because I've had some conversations with um, potential mentees who either have applied or are thinking of applying to the program you don't have to have a game plan to to apply to this program. In fact, in many ways, it's maybe it's better if you don't. So I don't want people to think like, oh, I know I want to be a VP of comms. And so that's great. That's what I need. If you are like, I don't know what the next step is. Great. That's exactly what a lot of this program will help you uncover. You don't have to have a plan set out. If you do, that's great. When And make sure you put that in your application so that we can match you with someone who may have had similar career path. Um, but if you're like, I'm just a little lost and I've done great things, but I don't know what to do next. Awesome. That's a great place to be as well. So just sort of to build on, on that from Lindsay too. But, and but I do yeah. think eventually you need a game plan. Like you need to have, that, I think that. this program will help people yes. develop a game plan. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I would say also for those people who might be considering the program that have direct reports, whether they're administrative direct reports or communicator direct reports, how are you going to mentor them if you have never been mentored? Mm. Yep. Participating in a program like this, you will not only learn things that will move your career forward, you will take in life skills that you will use to lead teams yourself that will make you a more effective leader of people, whether in your current situation or in your next job. I think the other thing that's important to call out here is we we tend to think of it as like mentor here and then mentee here. And I think it's this, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I expect to learn just as much from the mentee in this world. So I think that's something that is not just, we talk about top down communication and all that, like being not, not necessarily, like this is, this is the true relationship that you're building and each side needs to give and take from it. So I think that's a, a key element of any successful any relationship, mentor, mentee, employee, employer, whoever it is, that each is learning from each other. I think that's one of the most common pieces of feedback I've gotten from the mentors from previous years. And this came up on our our Meet the Mentors session on Monday. Everyone who's been part of this program before as a mentor said, I got just as much out of it Mm -hmm. as my mentee did. I learned a lot. I got new perspective. It forced me to you know, kind of level up my own skills and think about where I've come from and where I'm going. So that's, I, I I agree. I think it's a powerful program for both people who are a part of it. No question. I agree. And I'll add to that. It's kind of part of the question. I agree wholeheartedly with everything that y'all just said of 
if you do have a problem and you're something like a challenge you're facing, this is an opportunity to do it. If you if you can't think of a problem or a challenge you want to solve, even better. This is an opportunity for you to grow rather than solve a problem that you're facing or a roadblock. So think of it that way. You don't have to ha come in with a plan, but your mentor is here to help you create that plan. Um, and the other thing is, where was I going with this? Deb Gamut. Um, just being able to show up, right? Show up, invest in yourself and see what's coming. I think the Chuck, you're, you're on the same place. Like we have peer mentors. I have multiple peer mentors who are my age or younger or older, but we're at the same level. Right. And it is a relationship. It's something that you're going to continue to build and um, you just don't know where it's going to go, but it's going to be worth it. Love it. That's a great, that's a great ending note. I will end with a note of gratitude. I am so grateful for all of our mentors and the three of you for being part of this program and also for being here today. I'm also grateful to the technology goddesses who helped Lindsay be able to hear me and have my voice go through to Lindsay. <laughs> it's because we talk so much all the time where they're I, like, you know what, shut it down for a minute or Kristen, two. I had to go to my backup, backup, backup headphones. I have a, a full tech set in front of me right now. I think that's, that's the dedication from this program for everyone. Oh. Deadline to apply is October 31st. Joinicology.com is where you're going to find all of the information on our mentors and the entire program. Thank you all for being here today. Have the most wonderful Wednesday and everyone please take care. Thank you. Bye y'all. Bye everyone. Bye.